Hey, I'm James from Soak That Barbecue, and today we're covering fire management in a wood-fired pizza oven. And I'm sharing my three most common fire management techniques that you're gonna wanna use if you have a wood-fired oven, like my La Piazza Piccolo wood-fired oven. Let's get into it. Okay, we're gonna build each of these fires in our pizza oven in a second, but this is a little bit easier to demonstrate the three fires that I'm gonna show you. In fact, I said three, but there's actually a fourth, which is our heat soak fire. So I'm gonna start with our heat soak fire, which is getting our pizza oven up to temperature. And so I'll mention uh, the type of wood that I'm using as well as the type of fire that I'm building. So this is kiln dried grocery store birch wood, which I like using for starting our fire. It comes in just below a foot in total length. And again, we're about you know three fingers or so in terms of size. And this type of fire is great for building a very fast coal bed. The kiln dried wood will combust almost like a match. It burns very, very quickly. It'll help get our oven up to temperature and we don't have to wait all day for this to burn down. So for this, this is the easiest one. We're just going for a wide open campfire style fire and we're gonna build this right in the middle of our deck on our pizza oven as this is going to help heat soak the deck heat soak the thick five inches of insulation that we have. We wanna get some of that radiant heat built in. And so this is about a 20 minute fire to get us ready for whatever we're cooking. So again, kiln dried wood, uh, just under a foot in total size with lots of airflow gonna be wide open flames. So the first of our three official fires uh, that I was going to cover in today's video. So we're going to do a low and slow fire. We're going to do a hot and fast fire for something like steaks or pizza. And then the third fire that we're going to uh, set up is using leftovers of either of the two, which is our residual retained heat cooking. So let's start with our low and slow fire. So just comparing the size here in the splits, these are six inches in size. So these are actually the same wood. So these are both from Furtado Farms. The, this is just a pizza oven blend that comes cut in half. So instead of a full 12 inch split, uh, I'm getting six inches. I used to cut these down by uh, my miter saw until I had uh, the blade grab one of these full logs, kick up and actually break my miter saw and give me a good proper scare. So uh, until I find a better way of breaking these down, I've just been buying a six inch size and taking my hatchet and splitting it until it's about two fingers in size. So these, are, these were originally sort of together and I've broken them in half. So this is the perfect size split for a low and slow fire. And so just like what I've been using in my offset, I wanna take my largest two pieces and place them at the bottom. So if we had some coals in the middle, we would push those together and have this on the back left-hand side of our pizza oven, depending again uh, where we want our air to go. I'll cover that when we're actually in our oven. Then I would take sort of the next three close in size splits and I would place these very close to one another. Sometimes this is referred to the friction between the wood. The more air gaps that we have, the higher the flame that we're gonna get. I learned this uh, trying to apply, again, my offset style smoke management to my pizza oven. And so my first few uh, low and slow cooks, like when I did a pulled pork roast, I allowed too much open flame, which crisped up the top before the pork was ready. And so in subsequent low and slow cooks, what I've gone from is the larger splits to smaller splits, as well as tighter friction between them. And so when we do our low and slow cook, we're gonna have these basically barely an eighth of an inch, uh, barely uh, any light that you can see looking straight down. And this is going to be the perfect 270 degree low and slow smoking, promoting a nice clean burn. We don't want this smoldering, but this is going to be something that if I was doing baby back ribs, St. Louis ribs, a Boston butt, even if you wanted to, uh, again, tend your fire and do a brisket, you could absolutely do it this way and get that live fire experience without promoting too strong of a flame that's going to overcook the top. We want good smoke, good clean combustion without overdoing the top. Our next fire is something that we'll go to if we are going for pizza. So pizza or searing a steak, we need a lot of BTU, but 
just as I mentioned, you don't want too much flame rolling over the top. We can also do this by using large splits with too much air and we'll actually get the flame rolling right over, almost touching the deck of our pizza oven and potentially burning the top of our crust before the bottom's done. Even if the deck is reading temperatures of 900 degrees, this can still be too much open flame. So to help mitigate that, and I'll show you the airflow pattern uh, once we're over there, but I go for a bit more of uh, the Mark of Zorro type fire here, uh, where again, we are managing our friction between the coals and the bottom of our two largest logs with two on top, barely, again, an eighth to a quarter of an inch between them. And this is going to give us the BTU that we need uh, in order to keep our deck in that eight to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. But as well, I found, at least on this size oven, I, my model is the uh, Piccolo size uh, oven from La Piazza. It's good for about two pizzas. I think it's, a, I'll put the specs up on screen, but uh, 24 inches in size. This is the perfect balance for maintaining a deck surface temperature eight to 900 degrees, as well as giving me the right amount of flame to broil the top and get the top and the bottom to finish at exactly the same time. This is also, again, the type of fire that I would go with for searing a steak, because again, I want to get some of that flames rolling over and get a great Maillard reaction, but not burn the seasonings or the steak itself. So now that I've explained just a little bit more about the logs, the type of wood, let's go build some of these fires and I can explain the drafting and venting and placement within the pizza oven so you can cook whatever you like in your wood fired oven. Okay, let's get started with our setup and heat soak fire, which is our go-to fire for every cook. Start by removing our ash from our previous cook. This will just help reduce the amount of ash and dust that's blowing around once we start to get our fire going. So we want to start with a nice clean deck. Okay, also give that a quick brush. Again, just to reduce the amount of ash that's going to be flying around, especially if we were going to be doing something like pizza cooking directly on the deck. This is an important step. And of course, an opportunity for a fortuitous plug to mention that I have a save 30% code off for the tool set. So if you have a La Piazza oven like mine, it will come with this sort of charcoal wood grate. If we were going to be using this, I would place it in the center and it'll allow us to keep everything contained and move it over to the side. Uh, I tend to leave this out. I find it sometimes easier to directly access the fire. And since we're gonna be doing a couple different fires from low and slow to hot and fast, I'm gonna set this aside for today. So for our heat soak fire, we're gonna start right in the middle and go for wide open campfire placement. Also going to want to make sure that our vent is in the open upright position. This is going to allow maximum airflow out of our chimney. Grab our torch. I'm using a grill blazer grill gun, as you'll see here. It's gonna make quick work of this kiln dried wood. So we are up to cooking temperatures in no time. I'll rejoin you out of fast forward. We're gonna install our door. So now that we've got nice clean combustion, I'm gonna close the door. This is just going to help accelerate heat soaking our five inches of insulation. That's an important step to make sure that we get advantage of all of our heat sources. We're gonna obviously have anything we place on our deck is going to be conduction heat. It's gonna transfer right up into our pan or whatever we've got on there, or if it was a pizza we are cooking directly. Then we're going to have uh, our convection uh, after our conduction, which is the air moving and circulating. And I'll talk a little bit more about how to control that later. And then last but not least is our radiant heat. And so this is what we're working on right now is making sure that we get the benefit of that radiant heat being trapped and stored in our insulation. That's going to help radiate down and uh, serve particularly useful purposes when we're doing something like uh, our leftover radiant heat cooking or baking. Let this come up to temperature, rejoin you in a little bit. Okay, we are exactly 10 minutes later from lighting our fire, and I think we are getting ready to transition. So the first fire we're gonna build today that I'm gonna show you is our low and slow fire. So we are getting to the spot where we're ready to remove our door, move our fire, and start to build our low and slow fire. But I wanted to do that first to show you. We are nearly at 700 degrees uh, on our gauge, but I am not uh, getting to the point where I'm concerned about touching the outside. So the outside temperature, even though there's heat in there, it's definitely heat soaking we're about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. This is helping lock a bunch of that heat in and trap the energy in our five inches of insulation. I don't mention that too often, but there's two main features that I was looking for when shopping for an oven. One is the thickness of the floor deck. So again, a lot of uh, ovens, particularly at big box stores, go with sort of a thinner 
floor deck, which is gonna make it a little bit more difficult to regulate your surface temperature from underdone to going nuclear and burning something specially like pizza. But the one I was really interested in, particularly as I'm in a high traffic area, this is right, you know, sort of between the garage, we've got the pool over here, kids are going by all the time. And as you can see, I'm at 700 degrees on the gauge. I'll get a deck temperature in a second, I assume eight, 900 degrees. But if they were to accidentally bump into it, uh, a kid was to put their hand and say, oh, that looks fun. Uh, as you can see, I'm able to hold my hand here and not get third degree burns. And so that is another advantage of insulation outside of being able to help uh, retain that energy, particularly in my climate where we're nice and warm in the summer and cool in winter. There's the added benefit and something with young kids I was a little bit worried about is making sure that the surface temperature of things uh, in a high traffic area are not going to be causing third degree burns. So uh, about that, let me show you what the surface temperature is and you can see directly within sort of the 30 seconds it takes me to move the camera, what sort of temperatures we're getting inside. Move our door. Get a bit of a surface temperature here back on the deck. So we're about 700 over there. Just about 700 over there. And then in the middle, well, I'm probably getting a little bit of the flame, so I'll try and avoid that. But we're 700 degrees all the way around. So really happy that we have now evened out the heat distribution across our deck. So at this point, I'm gonna do a couple things. We've got a little bit of life left in this fire, but I'm gonna rake my coals over to the back corner now. I give this a quick brush if we were doing a pizza right here to again, make sure that we're not gonna get any ash or off-putting taste on our pizza. And we are a couple minutes away still from burning because we're 10 minutes in. So I think we'll be about the 15 minute mark, but I'm gonna take the opportunity for our low and slow fire to add the wood splits that we will be using into the pizza oven so that they can start to dry out. If I don't do this step and I take wood, this is naturally seasoned wood, so there's still a high moisture content, and I move it onto a dying coal bed, we are going to get some of that off-putting smoke that we don't want. And since this is simulating what we would do for ribs or pulled pork, uh, we're gonna let these heat soak for a few minutes before moving them over. Okay, we are now exactly 20 minutes later and our coal bed has died down. So I'm gonna look for our two largest splits, place them in the back. Try and avoid blocking the camera as I do that. Push these coals that I have towards the uh, other log. So we've got a bit of a space in the middle. And then as I mentioned, we're gonna lay across the top, starting at the back and tightly stack these next three on top close together. Just while we're waiting for those to catch, should only be about 20 or 30 seconds. Let's get a deck temperature, see where it's gone to. So you can see we're already dropping with our dome open from 700 degrees down to 500 degrees. And this is quickly gonna stabilize into about that 400 degree on the high side, 300 degree on the low side, which is why we would want a bit of an air gap if we were doing something like ribs or pork, so we're not sitting directly on this conductive heat. Okay, so we can see our low and slow fire has caught, but it is in wide open flames, and we are getting some rolling around the top, which would be too much for something like a pulled pork. So we're gonna slow that down. Uh, we're gonna do two things to slow it down. The first thing that we're going to do is adjust our damper here. So right now you see it is in the wide open position. So I'm gonna close that by a about a third. So that's now 30% closed, which is going to be pushing more of that air out front. I'm gonna reinstall the camera and install our door, show you how we're gonna settle this fire down. So the second component of managing our fire is going to be installing our door. Now our door with the logo cutout is going to provide adequate air, but we can also adjust the venting pattern. So if we were to prop open our door on the right hand side with our fire on the left hand side. This is going to ensure that we are getting a cross current inside of our oven before it vents out top. Uh, alternatively, if we wanted to protect the food or whatever we had on this side a little bit more, I could draw from the left hand side to encourage again that fire to go up and rely more on the residual heat. This is what I'm going to do because again, I want that flame pattern more contained to the left hand side and not rolling over directly on the top. So we are now holding a nice 300 degrees Fahrenheit on our temperature gauge with a small open flame. So this 
depending on the size of the wood, the type of wood, but in general, I get about 30 minutes max operation. So anywhere in that 20 to 30 is when I want to be checking. So about the halfway point, now what I want to do is add another split or two so that you start building up some heat, drying out so they will combust. And before our flame goes out and we lose open burning flames, this is when we want to add that log on in order to continue generating nice, clean smoke versus that off-putting smoke. If you tend to miss your mark and you've got dying coal bed and you add your wood and you're getting a bunch of bad smoke, this would be when you want to remove your food or add some oxygen, whether again, your torch or blowing on the fire, but it's not worth leaving your food uh, subjected to that bad smoke for a long period of time as that's really not gonna take much time to go from sweet, wonderful smelling smoke to some dirty smoke. You'll get the hang of it, but again, that window is about 20 to 30 minutes. I've already added about the halfway point, another split here. Let me just show you what it looks like when we roll into the fire. I've also started to add our larger logs since that's the next fire that we're going to build, which is something for steak or for pizza. Let's come nice and close and I'll show you what the combustion cycle should look like. Remove our door again. You can see we're 270, 300 degrees, exactly what we want. And in that time that I was talking, I could already see that I just missed the point of open flame. So this is the one piece that I added. What I want to do is nestle that into the coals. And so that was about 20 seconds. So had I been uh, not talking to you guys and paying attention, we wouldn't have got any delay. That piece would combust right away. But we are now ready to reinstall our door and continue just as we were adding a piece or two. Again, I find that the intervals go based on typically adding a piece to two pieces, back to a piece, back to two pieces. Once we've got our coal bed built, when we started with five or six of these smaller hardwood splits in order to make sure that we have a sufficient coal bed. So now we've covered our low and slow smoking fire. Let's move on to our hot and fast. So I showed earlier the Zorro style fire. So these splits have been preheating on the deck and you can see actually already starting to get ready to combust. So I'm gonna place my two largest ones right on the bottom with the coals in the middle. So let's rake these out. And since our air is coming into the oven, depending again, if we're using the door, I wanna place my splits like this. If I were to place like that, I would end up blocking more air getting further back to the fire. So by going sort of front to back on a diagonal angle, this is going to help promote getting some better airflow and again, uh, help reduce the time to combustion. So I'll place the first one and then the second one nice and tight. Oh, I nearly forgot just as those have started to combust immediately after we add them, we do want to adjust our top vent now to open. So we're getting, as you see, some of that smoke wafting out. That's because again, our vent is closed. Once I change this to open, we'll see the smoke pattern start to move up to our vent chimney. Come back down to our fire. So I'm also going to, at this point, since we've just gone from a low and slow fire, our, our deck temperature I mentioned, if we were getting about 300 degrees, 270 degrees ambient temperature, we're probably gonna be sitting around 400 degrees on our deck. So yeah, we're basically exactly at 400 degrees. So now if we are moving to fire number two, which is what we want for searing a steak or cooking a pizza, I want to get our deck temperature back up to a high temperature. So I'm gonna reinstall the door. And now coming back to our vent, which we opened all the way just to get uh, it venting properly and make sure we weren't getting smoke wafting out the front, I want to adjust this to about 20%. So I've moved that maybe a quarter of an inch or so. And we're going to just keep an eye on the type of smoke that's coming from our vent. It should be completely clear. If it starts to go gray and cloudy or I see a bunch of smoke wafting out the front of our oven, I know that I need to make an adjustment, but right now this looks good. If we were to leave this all the way open, that heat will be racing as well as some flames just coming to the top of our vent, and we're not going to be trapping the heat down onto the deck of our pizza oven for getting that great sort of 60 to second, uh, you know, pizza cook. So let's let this come up to temperature. I'll rejoin you in a couple minutes. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes of transitioning to our high heat fire. So I mentioned our high heat fire is great for steak or pizza. And this is actually the same workflow that we would have if we were cooking a steak. We would start with our low and slow fire for steak. To bring that up to a temperature, I would go to about 114 degrees Fahrenheit, pull it out, let it rest. It typically will gain about 10 degrees more in momentum. 
add in some more wood so we are just juggling that fine line. Occasionally I see a little flicker of flame uh, and that just tells me that I've gotten as tight as I can on my air control vent. If I was to go much uh, further, I would start to get dirty smoke. If I was to go all the way open, we would just be getting a raging inferno and all of our heat would be going out the top instead of building and storing energy inside of our radiant dome as well as the deck of our pizza oven. So I think this is the perfect spot to be searing a steak and or doing a pizza. So let's find out if we're right, get our high heat gloves and our temperature gun, and we'll get a reading on our floor and see if we are at that Napoleon style to see if we are at that perfect eight, 900 degrees for a 60 second pizza. Remove our door, get a temp reading where we would have our pizza. So we were looking at eight, 900 degrees. We're right in the middle, 850 degrees. So if we wanted a little bit more, I would just give this more than the 10 minutes or so that I gave it, but that has built that up to, I would be uh, cooking pizza at this point. Let me grab the camera and go mobile so I can show you the flame pattern that I'm looking for inside of our dome to perfectly balance doneness on the bottom as well as broiling the top or similarly for a steak to get a good sear. Okay, my third and final fire that anybody with a pizza oven should master and take advantage of because it unlocks so much potential for unique cooks while imparting some amazing wood flavor is the radiant heat cook. And so we're gonna follow the exact same sort of setup to get to here where we wanted to start with our heat soak fire. Then I'll go with a bit of a full BTU uh, wood split fire to again, really make sure that everything is completely heat soaked top and bottom. And we would adjust whether it's door on or door off, depending on what we're gonna cook. So for example, if I was doing a spatchcock chicken, I recently did my family's favorite Alabama, uh, I recently did my Alabama, I recently did my family's favorite Alabama white sauce glazed chicken in my pizza oven. And you want to uh, have the door off and wait till those coals die down to the point where we no longer really see open flames. If we, if we were to insert our chicken right now or when there's still open flames, we're gonna get a crispy skin on the top. There's absolutely enough radiant energy to crisp up that skin. But the problem is the skin will be done in about 10 minutes and our chicken isn't fully cooked. So we wanna let that die down with the door off because again, there'll be too much stored energy. If I was going something for like my bison tri-tip where I'm not so worried about the skin, but I wanna get a nice medium rare all the way through, I might be inclined to leave the door on, pull it off when we're ready to slide in our tri-tip and again, close it to again, just take advantage of that gentle radiant heat. Same would be true if we were baking some bread or making some hamburger buns for tomorrow's cook or something like that. Uh, after a pizza cook, it's a great time to do some of these supplemental cooks using radiant heat. So we'll wait a couple minutes, I'll show you, I'll put a screen over top showing you what the fire would look like to be a perfect example of what you would look for for doing a radiant heat cook. So that's it for today's video on my wood-fired pizza oven in terms of how to manage your fire. But speaking of my pizza oven, the next couple of cooks that you might be interested in is a lobster tail curry. It's absolutely awesome. You're gonna love that as well as tacos al pastor. So those will be uh, coming out in July and August. So make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell turned on so you're alerted when it comes out. If you have any other questions about fire management, pizza oven, or anything in general, be sure to let me know down in the comments. I'll be sure to check it out. That's it for today though. I'm James with Soak Barbecue. Signing off. 